there's a whole bunch of goodies again here in front of me and as we promised we'll have a weekly bait demonstration or explanation or a little insert about making baits why we make baits for certain areas adapting to species and all the fundamentals you need to know or that could help you get results when you plan your bait you're making and uh, even on the water reading site we'll start later where you're going to be casting those baits but first all these things in front of me is what I would like to run through first purely because this is the stuff I use and this is important this is part of when I make baits that plays a role depending on the water and depending on what bait I'll use some of these items on a regular basis and some of them not so regular but I'm just gonna run you guys through what is essential and what will help you if you wanna look at the baits we're making forward and you wanna make some of those baits, these are the things we'll be using going forward. Well, let's start with the most important part and that is your bait knife, okay? <laughs> to me, that's very important. Now, this I actually carry on my side because they go missing so easily. So I'll always have a knife, my bait knife, which is a fillet knife on the side of my bucket and uh, we find in the north coast of Natal as well those uh, kites will come and steal your knife if you leave it on your on your bait box a lot of times they've grabbed them and they fly away with them and they they drop them in the dunes or in the bushes or somewhere and you're without a knife so I always car carry a spare knife in any case in my bag um, this is a mustard fillet knife this is obviously uh, um, a high level knife very nice and with what goes hand in hand with this is your knife sharpener. I untied it from my bag. It's tied on the side of my tackle bag and it's always there. Now don't, you know, if, you, if your baits look horrible and you, you don't have a sharp knife, don't ask why. Okay, there's two things, your bait cotton and your knife that helps you make presentable neat baits as well as the cotton we use which, which um, is the latex cotton and I'll run you through that. But these are the simplest little lightest gadgets you can wear uh, on your bag to keep your knife sharp and, and very simple you're going to sharpen your knife whenever you see it's not cutting the bait nicely you just slide it through here and bob your on. Then another very essential part is your chocker hammer. Now there, there's many you get the light aluminium one which is the common well priced one and everyone knows that. Um, I've grown fond of the stainless steel ones, they last forever if you don't chuck it away. Um, they're heavy so they assist with mushing that chocker bait. We'll run through that in the bait, bait demos. Chocker, the more you can get that smell to come out, the better the result. And that's what it's all about. Little things that makes big differences in the long run and will get you better results. Now I use the stainless steel ones. Um, I've got a couple of these whenever I find them in the shop, which is difficult to find and they're quite pricey I think they range about 300 somewhere there, 300 rand um, I buy one for in case I lose them and I can't find them again So I've got about three or four of these And then I bought this one which is lovely to mush up for, for blob baits and stuff like that to really mush it up You see it's flattened there. It's nice and big and it's heavy Keep in mind this is heavy to carry with you and secondly a little thing I didn't like of it is that you know it screws in here so it gets loose when you use it and that gets a little bit annoying so what I need to do is actually just lock it up uh, put put some serious glue in there and lock it in fact it looks like you can put a screw in the top if that's the case I'll lock up the screw but regardless this is lovely to mush up for 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 um, blob baits and so on but I won't carry this if I'm gonna do a 8k kilometer walk um, looking for fish or vital or the eastern cap this is not the bait or oh, the, the hammer I will necessarily take with me okay now let's start with we're gonna have two baits we're gonna have mushy baits that that we're not really worried to be firm and then you're gonna have your firm baits which for bait presentation and neat baits that's that we use regularly um, and for that, we use the sati sticks. We use toothpicks, it's probably the one you're going to use most. I stick them like this, just easy to use. Uh, this I use to lock a bait onto a hook if I'm fishing on a hook. On a dangle, that's not necessary. But if you're going to, and also to create a stiff body with your foam, you can tie this with your foam on the shank of the hook up your line to create a stiff body, and we'll be using that a lot. Um, secondly, your foams, there's so many different shapes and sizes on the market. 
It's round ones, you're gonna cut them to size. You get these ones, I like having these in my bag when I wanna make funny baits or different baits. And you cut them to size, just general fishing. I use a lot of this. And you can double up on them if you want more flotation and a bigger bodied bait. You can cut them down if you want smaller baits. You can use half of this. Um, you're, gonna, you're gonna be cutting, which brings me to the scissors. You'll always have a scissor to shape your bait as well as your foam. Makes it easy. Obviously you can use your knife. Scissor makes it easier. So on the foam side, we'll use a lot of that. Um, then dingle dangles. I'm gonna use a couple of dingles to show you guys how they work. These ones have been used as they should be. Um, and they different shapes and sizes, but we're going to show you how to make your own dingles. They're available in most stores in the sizes you want, and you keep them, and it's very nice to quickly tie your bait on this and just hook it on your hook. The shrink rack at the top is where you're going to put the hook through, as simple as that, and you tie your bait on this. It's got foam in already, and it builds the body. Then I've got little McGafters like the eyes when we make really presentable baits um, in clean water. We'll get to that dirty and clean water. Um, then you start using stuff like eyes. We used to use glitter a lot. This is not fish friendly, so we don't use it much anymore. Um, because it comes off and it stays in the fish's stomach, I'm sure uh, any plastic is not healthy for any fish. So we don't use this, but you can use flashes, kuta flashes they use in deep sea. You can put a bit of that for shine, or you can look, I don't know if there's any available, but you know, kind of uh, eco-friendly glitter. Uh, that you put on chocolate baits, so give that that glimmer. Anything you use to give it that glimmer, but make sure it's not harmful to to the fish or the ocean. Then, well, for pretty much all my nylon traces, I use the Siglin fluorocarbon. If the water is dirty, I'll sometimes use Maximo or Kingfisher uh, leader line, and I'll tie my traces with that. But 99% of the time, I like fishing fluorocarbon. So. And Siglon is the only one I use. It has never dropped me. Um, with, with, with fluorocarbon, you've got issues with knots sometimes. They don't tie the best knots. But in this case, I've just grown accustomed to this. And confidence is everything in fishing. In your baits, in casting, in getting results. Confidence plays a big role. You must believe in your products and you must actually want to use them. They must work for you and you must be happy with your knot strength on everything you use. Now this in particular, I use it both fresh water and salt water and I'm sold on it. Then on the traces, we'll, this is the, the carbon coating, you get nylon coated, fish make, trace wire, that's what I've been using all the years, it's never dropped me. On the piano wire side, where we're gonna use this, as oh, basically shad traces really, where we use piano wire, and then for all your dingles, if you're gonna make your own dingles, make sure you've got the number 15 American fishing wire, or 17 it goes up but 15 and higher is what you're going to use to make dingles and the dingles especially where we're going to use that is for your big head baits like big shark baits if you take a whole yellow tail head you'll make your own dingles and i'll show you guys how to do that for that you'll need a number 15 and higher then uh, you know what there's only really one hook i use in, in any of the edible and non-edible fishing on my nylon traces, meaning skates and rays, and that's the soy, ring soy from Mustad. Um, what's nice about it, it's got sizes all the way to 10 o's, which we never had on the market. But this hook for its sharpness, its strength, the fact that it's so lightweight, and I love the color, um, this is still my favorite hook, and it's pretty much all I use in that area. When we start throwing shark baits, bigger baits, then, I use a combination of the new tuna, mustad tuna circle, which I don't have here now, and the catfish, mustad catfish. Nice bait holder hooks, meaning if I, this is ideal if you don't want to fish a circle hook, to put a big dangle on this. But I also use a combination of circle hooks and the catfish hooks of mustad. So that's important. What did I miss here? Obviously your skirts to put color and stuff. Um, I only use how much sheet tape. I'm gonna, make the effort or make the decision that day to put a bit of color on my bait. It's Yamashita, it's nothing else. Um, maybe some kuta skirts here and there, but if it's uh, the, the flashes. But when it comes to skirts, it's only Yamashita. I like the, the chartreuse color, and the pink is obviously a favorite, and I'm making presentable baits, and this you're gonna use in clear water. Any add-ons or anything that will, will add to your, your presentation of your bait is for cleaner water. Your dirty water we're gonna fish, fleshy, uh, bloody baits. Now that covers everything I'll be using to make the baits on a weekly basis. If there's something new, obviously I'll show you guys, because sometimes 
Being creative and making baits is, is part of the fun and part of getting results, is showing a fish something different. Uh, as I always say, fish aren't stupid, they learn if everyone makes the same baits all the time and they see the same thing. That's why lures evolve um, and we get better results with new lures, is because fish aren't stupid, they get used to certain things, especially fish that's, that's resident fish are a bit tougher to catch as well because they get used to it and that is where your trace, your technique, your fluorocarbon um, and your bait presentation plays a role. You want to cheat the fish in presenting something as natural as possible which he then feels comfortable to eat and that's the whole objective of fishing. So get rid of this now. Then, okay, alright. Got a cutting board here to make the baits on. This comes off an old safari chiller and that brings me to the other part. Bait, fresh bait, safari chiller goes hand in hand. There is no other bait box on the market as far as I'm concerned. Um, they are a little bit heavier because they're made of, of fiberglass but we know what bait costs these days. Guys, we're fishing with seafood. All the bait I fish with and all we fish with, you can cook and eat. It's seafood, it's export quality in most cases, and that's what we use. Now you want to keep that fresh, it's expensive. Safari Chiller keeps my bait frozen all day, doesn't matter how hot it is, and I will not use another bait box. Um, when we walk very far, we use lighter options, but then you take less bait, and you don't lose a lot of bait. Um, but if you're going to take quite a bit of bait in your box, um, with the Safari Chiller buy in ratio of the bait you're going to use, that's why we have several sizes. The big one you want it more than half full to keep the bait frozen, which is just logic because there's too much oxygen in there. Um, otherwise you just put a bit of newspaper on top of your bait and keep it like that and only take the pieces out you're going to use and that will, will be on top of the newspaper. But keep your bait frozen. If I come back from a trip and the bait is defrosted, I will not be using it again. I'll either eat it that evening or eventually chuck it away. But um, fresh bait is everything. Now the first uh, essential point I want to discuss, just basic principles of, of tying baits. Your bait, should size of your bait obviously depends on the species you're targeting. And that should match or you should match your hook to that. Okay, and I'm going to give you an example. Okay, these two hooks. Okay, these two hooks. This is the catfish hook which we use for sharks. The ring soy mustard 4.0 to 6.0 is probably the most common edible type of hook we use for most species unless it comes to hull yun, bronze bream, which has got smaller mouths. Now you adapt your bait accordingly. I'm not going to this is an average size bait for a big shark. If you make a bloody bait or a cast bait, the guys can now cast these type of baits with, with a 15, 14.6 foot spinning rods. And uh, then you're gonna use a big hook like this. You won't bury it in the bait, you'll hang it here. It doesn't mean, and in, in, in this case particularly, what I would do is I'll double up, I'll have a second hook that sits proud, okay? The most important part when it comes to size is the size of your bait should fit the hook size. Okay, and we're gonna run through that as we do baits of, of what's most common, but very important, size bait I'll fish with this hook is like that. And look at this, your hook must be proud. So you're gonna build your hook always to stick out. Very important in fishing, you want the hook to be proud and you don't want it to be able to push around like that, especially on the big baits. For instance, we take this, you stick this hook in here, and a shark comes and he pushes it down with his jaw like that, you're not gonna hook that fish. So it's important that your hooks are proud and they're fixed proud. Okay. How to fix them, we'll get through. That's where all these little uh, society sticks, toothpicks, all of them play a role, where we use the beads uh, and pieces of foam you can use as well. Now we'll cover it a bit more in detail, the hook sizes in ratio of, of bait sizes with dangles, dingle dangles that makes it possible to fish a bigger bait with a smaller hook. When tying your bait onto the hook, you'll have that in proportion of the hook. The basic principle of water color, a big topic, 
and obviously it plays a role. With cleaner water, here's the basic principle, you want your bait as neat as possible because fish feed on sight. In dirty water, you can tie, doesn't really matter how neat it is, obviously you still want to keep your baits neat, but then you tie a bloody mushy bait to get more smell out because they use more sense of smell to find their food. Now as we go along, we'll run through that. We're going to tie both mushy baits and very neat, very presentable baits. So you guys will pick up as we go along. Now in principle, there's a lot of baits out there. And yes, some baits are mainly for certain species or uh, residential fish and rock fish. Some are just mainly for sharks. You won't pick up a lot of edibles on it. And as we go along, obviously we'll run through it. Now our first couple of bait presentations we're going to do over the next month or two will be a lot of sardine baits, purely because it's sardine time, it's the sardine run, and uh, it's relative to, to the time we're in, you guys will be using a lot of sardine bait. With a sardine run, if you're not using the Natal sods, you're going to lose out, you're going to be watching TV like we say. Now the first thing, if you've got fishing planned on a Natal coast for June, July and even Transkai, and you can get your hands on fresh Natal sods, that's the first thing you should do for the best results. Then it cancels out pretty much all bait if the sardines are around, because you'll catch sharks, skates, every species in the sea will take Natal sods if you've got fresh sods. Now look for blast frozen sods, ask the supplier you're buying from, the Kingfisher blast, freeze them, but there's a couple of stores in Natal that uh, will have that available and that you can keep for a whole year in your, in your freezer. So get your hands on some of that and we'll be showing a couple of those baits and different options, full sod baits, uh, cutlets, strip baits, whatever you can use um, throughout the sardine run and throughout the year using sardine baits. Important, everything we show you guys, if it comes to rigs, knots, different equipment, lines we use, hooks we use, baits, bait sizes, bait presentation, all of that comes together. And the combination you choose of each forms an ideal method to target the species or fish on their day and to get the better results. So obviously knowing baits very well and knowing rigs very well will get you good results. Make sure you know the knots as well, obviously, to make sure those rigs will last. So as we go along, it will all unfold how you fit these things together and how you make it work. It's not really as complicated as what I make it sound. Eventually it becomes second nature. But remember this, practice, practice, practice. We can show you a hundred baits. If you don't practice them, you will forget them. And uh, the best is once you, you, you practice a couple of these techniques, we show you cutlets and fillets and how you apply them and how you build the baits and building the bodies, you can start creating your own baits. There's no laws, there's no rules. You can really, once you've got those principles, you can build any bait you want. So stay tuned forward if you're interested in the weekly bait presentations.